So every time I film a video with one of your cars, we're always just like, this is excellent and this is crap. It is absolutely awful. <laughs> the most terrible engine. <laughs> is this an absolutely awful place to sit? <laughs> g'day, g'day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And if you have about $30,000 to spend on a sporty car, chances are you're going to be looking at something that has a turbocharged six cylinder of some description, like this 2014 BMW M235i. Or you could buy an old fashioned dinosaur with a naturally aspirated V8, like this Lexus ISF. Today we're going to be seeing do you go with the wildly inefficient but delightful sounding naturally aspirated V8 or the modern turbocharged 6? Neither. Because <laughs> they're both they're both crap. What we need is a turbocharged four-cylinder pair with a CVT. That's what we want. <laughs> the exterior of the M235i in my mind is one of BMW's finest. The M2 in particular of this generation is a truly horrendous looking car. <laughs> but my brown Camry over here is also in my mind, a very, very good looking car with the 19 inch wheels, the big quad tips around the back and just that bulgy front end. It really is a stunning looking car as well. Boom. Boom. Your i8 noises that you've coded into this thing are so weird. <laughs> Pop the bonnet. Boom. The interior of the 235 is... Subpar. <laughs> <laughs> Compared with the ISF, this is just so much better. The steering wheel actually has buttons on it that do things that don't involve a Japanese woman talking to you, which I'm not particularly fond of. <laughs> the build quality of all the buttons here on the inside is lovely. The iDrive is basically the best infotainment system on the market. Extremely easy to use. You've got Bluetooth, you've got a reversing camera. The seats are very aggressively bolstered. I'm feeling my sides being squelched like a block of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's just better in every single way. So there was simply no point in talking about the ISF because it's terrible. No, the ISF's interior is all right. But the problem is because all of our ones are imports, everything's in stick language and everything just falls to pieces. Like the door cards, the dashboard all creaks and rattles and gets all sticky and icky. The ISF uses a 2UR GSE. It's a five liter naturally aspirated V8 making 311 kilowatt, 420 horsepower and 505 newton meters of torque. The M235 on the other hand also has an eight speed automatic sending its power to the rear wheels but because it is a ZF8 one of the finest transmissions available today it is a lot smoother has much shorter gears and generally just shifts a hang of a lot better and up front this has an N55 B30 it's a three liter turbocharged inline six making 240 kilowatt or about 330 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque but of course as with just about every turbo BMW engine plug your phone into the OBD2 port and you can get a hang of a lot more power out of it as the owner jack has done with this one and what that means is that this tiny little turbocharged six will very easily keep up with the enormous five liter v8 as we shall now see in my new and improved safety acceleration overtaking test what? <laughs> well i don't want to call it a rolling race because then it's a race but if i call it a safety acceleration overtaking test then it's safe oh yes so yes safe. and therefore i can't be sent to prison The best part about this car is that the transmission is incredible. The one on my Lexus shifts really good when you're going flat chat, but this shifts really good no matter how you drive it. Down in a second. And it's literally just an absolutely immediate shift. It sounds so good. And you get that shock, which I like, because that's the thing I don't like about dual clutches, is they just have no gear shock. Whereas this, when it upshifts, there's like a kick, and you can tell it's just going as hard as it possibly can, which is so good. In general, I pretty much cannot fault this car. If I were to have one complaint, it's just that the engine is a bit quiet. Once you get moving on a chip seal road like this, it's completely drowned out by the tire noise and even at, you know, red line, you just 
can't really hear it, which is the only thing that I don't really like. And the owner was telling me that he really wants to, you know, liven up the exhaust a little bit. And I'm like, why? From the outside, it's so loud. But from the inside, I can see why. And even if you drop the windows, it just... The engine very quickly just gets drowned out. But in every other regard, the transmission's perfect. The steering feel is excellent. The engine outside the car, if you're behind it and you're hearing those potent exhaust tips back there, sounds so good. You can just toss it into corners. Oy. It's loose, but in a very fun way. And it's not annoying because if you don't want it to oversteer, you just change subtly how you drive and then it won't step out. But if you want to play with it a little bit, you can. And oh, it is just so good. The V8. That is why you buy this, because of the sound. <laughs> While this is frankly no faster and the transmission is nowhere near as good as the 235, that sound is worth it for me, man. And that's why there are still people who buy old-fashioned dinosaur, naturally aspirated, V8 engines because of that racket from the front end which is just unbeatable man it's so good you hit 4000 rpm it's like you hit VTEC and then the V8 noise it just takes over look if you've got 30 grand to spend and you buy something like one of these two cars you're not going to be disappointed it'll be reasonably modern so it'll have enough features it's going to be fast it's going to be very fun to drive great but for me, I am always going to love the sound of a naturally aspirated V8, as will so many others. Smacking rev limiter. And on a road like this, you can kind of forgive the somewhat average transmission because when you're going flat chat, it works flawlessly, frankly. It's just around town where it's a bit more sort of herky-jerky. And the other area where I'll give it other than sound is steering feel, man. This is just a connected driving experience. But for the most part, either of these cars are going to set you alight every time you drive them. So go out and purchase one, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time.